wonder sometimes how to select good leaders in your country, in your state, in your district or in your organization or within your locality or maybe within your family or within any area of life. How do you do that? So today we are going to see the answer to that question and indirectly this is answered here, not directly. So today we are continuing with the Queen Kunti prayers in the Bhagavad Gita playlist, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 1st Canto, 8th chapter, 32nd verse. So there it is. Let us recite the shloka and then we will see the translation and purport. Kechit ahur ajam jatam punya shlokasya kirtaye yado priyasya nanavave malasya yeva chatanavam. Wow. The word sandalwood is used here, Malaya. The translation is, Some say that the unborn is born for the glorification of pious kings. And others say that he is born to please the king Yadu, one of your greatest devotees. You appear in his family as sandalwood appears in the Malaya hills. So Queen Kunti in the previous verse, she said that how how people get bewildered sometimes by seeing the actions of God. So now she is saying that there is some discussion about the birth of Lord Krishna here. So it's written here that some say that the unborn is born. What do you mean by this? Unborn is born. It means that God never takes birth. He appears. So in this purport we will see that the comparison is made with the sun, that the sun doesn't take birth in a literal sense, but the sun appears. So, for example, it's night time here now, but in some part of USA or Canada, maybe it's daytime. And after some hours, it will be daytime in India, I mean morning. So just because the sun is not here, it doesn't mean that the sun is dead, okay? But the point here is, we will understand how to select good leaders in the society. It's there in this purport. Amazing it is. And yes, if you have not watched the other videos, then please watch it in this playlist. And if you are new, then like, comment, share and subscribe. And share this video with somebody who is interested to know how to select good leaders. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And if you want a consultation from me regarding any area of your life, then you could go down to my description section where you will find my website. Alright, so now we will see the purport. Because the Lord's appearance in this material world is bewildering, there are different opinions about the birth of the unborn. Birth is bewildering. Bewildering means how can God take birth? That's what many people from other religions they accuse us sometimes they say that oh what kind of god do you have you know <laughs> he's such a uh, petty god that he also takes birth like you and me so how can he be god you know because god should be divine blah 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 <laughs> not to offend anybody but th these are questions generally in the mind of everybody that Okay, if I am also taking birth, that means I am also under law of karma, then God is also coming just like me and you, you know. So what's so special about God? Well, that is why they say his appearance is bewildering, which means that people who do not have faith in his words, they get confused. And that is why he is known as the unborn, which means he never takes birth. He appears like the sun. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that he takes his birth in the material world, although he is the Lord of all creations and he is unborn. Which shloka in the Gita says this? If you know, write it down in the comments. So there cannot be any denial of the birth of the unborn because he himself establishes the truth. Paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya chidushkitam. That shloka is there. But still there are different opinions as to why he takes his birth. So now the conversation has changed to does he take birth or not from there to why does he appear. 
because he doesn't take birth in a literal sense but he appears but now the now the point is there are different opinions of why he appears or why he takes birth that is also declared in the bhagavad gita he appears by his own internal potency to re-establish the principles of religion and to protect the pious and to annihilate the impious just now the shloka which i said it demonstrates these principles that is the mission of the appearance of the unborn three missions what are they protect the impious annihilate the uh, sorry protect the pious annihilate the impious and re-establish the principles of religions these are three reasons why god appears lord shri krishna certain certainly wanted to oh sorry there's one statement before that is the mission of the appearance of the unborn still it is said that the lord is there to glorify the pious king yudhishthir lord shri krishna certainly wanted to establish the kingdom of the pandavas for the good of all in the world when there is a pious king ruling over the world the people are happy there you go we are coming to the point now when the ruler is impious the people are unhappy should i repeat when the ruler is impious the people are unhappy in the age of kali in most cases the rulers are impious wow 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 and therefore the citizens are also constantly unhappy continuously unhappy but in the case of democracy the impious citizens themselves elect their representative to rule over them there and therefore they cannot blame anyone for their unhappiness so this is very true these days you will see in social media or when people are having tea and coffee you know they are going on insulting politicians right and left they are going and insulting people from different political parties but they forget to ask one question fundamentally that who have elected them if a political leader is so bad then how did he or she get elected that means there are people who are also tuning into that frequency otherwise that person cannot be elected in democracy because in democracy in a to a large extent the people decide who is going to sit in the throne but if the leader is not liked by people then the question is how did he become a leader it's the people who put them into that position so that is what is been said here that and therefore they cannot blame anyone for their unhappiness because it is they themselves who have made them leaders maharaj therefore maharaj yudhishthir is meant here to be glorified by lord krishna he had also glorified king yadu having taken his birth in the family that is why krishna is known as yadu nandan sometimes he is one of the descendants of the great yadu he is known as yadava yadu veera yadu nandana etc although the lord is always independent of such obligation so for example lord ram is known as raghunath no? raghuveer as it's mentioned uh, like krishna is known as yadu veer but that doesn't mean he is actually you know like lord ram actually he is son of dasharath or he is the descendant of uh, some of his ancestors it doesn't mean that because he is unborn he he cannot be the descendant of anybody but he accepts these names because uh, he wants to glorify these great souls and we will come to that very soon he also glorified king yadu yes although the lord is always independent of such, such obligation so he is not obliged he is just like the sandal wood that grows in the malaya hills trees can grow anywhere and everywhere yet because the sandal wood trees grow mostly in the area of malaya hills the name sandal wood and the malaya hills are interrelated therefore the conclusion is that the lord is ever unborn like the sun and yet he appears as the sun rises on the eastern horizon fantastic as the sun is never the sun of the eastern horizon so 
the Lord is no one son, but he is the father of everything that be. Let's read the statement again. As the sun is never the sun of the eastern horizon. <laughs> it means that we think that the sun is coming from the eastern horizon, but actually it doesn't come from the eastern horizon, you see. Because the sun is always there, it's not that suddenly, you know, the sun has come out from there. But it appears to us that from the east it's rising. So the Lord is no one's son. Now it's S-O-N, okay? No confusion here. So the Lord is no one's son. So Lord Ram is not the son of Dasharat actually. Although he's still. <laughs> but he is the father of everything that we Ham Sarvasya Prabhavo Matta Sarvam Pravartate. That is what Krishna says, you know, Ham Bija Prada Pita, that I am the seed giving father of all living beings. So that's the conclusion of this purport that the Lord appears in the dynasties of such great souls like Yadu and Raghu, for example, because he wants to glorify them just like sandalwood can appear anywhere, but it appears in the Malaya hills. So the thrust is that when the leaders of the society are spiritual, like Yudhishthira Maharaj, for example, like Yadu, like Raghu, like Dasrat Maharaj, then only the people, the descendants or the people who are living there, you know, as in Sanskrit they say Praja, only then they can be happy. So whenever we are electing somebody, as I said, anywhere, as, as a politician or as a community leader or in any authority post, then we have to understand that to the degree that person is elevated in spirituality, to that degree he will be selfless. Because when you know that you are you are supposed to be uh, cultivating spiritual consciousness inside, then you know that there is not much use of pampering the body and the senses. And then the person is selfless. Otherwise, if a person is totally beyond the conception of spirit, he or she doesn't have any knowledge of spirit, of God, then the person can get too much engrossed in satisfying his own senses. And that is what is happening to leaders today. Everywhere you see there is corruption, corruption, governments have been toppled up and down. So many things are happening. And even if it's a democracy, people are not happy sometimes. Yes, so many people you see, they are dying out of poverty, they are, you know, the crimes increasing, there is so many scams which keep coming out every day, there are so many scandals, you know, big, big leaders in big, big positions, even presidents of countries, they get entangled in so many scandals, I will not take name here, but everybody knows the examples, so the point here is that Material qualification is important, but the most important is like Yudhishthira Maharaj. He was Dharmaraj. That is his first. That's his first identity. The greatness of Yudhishthira Maharaj is not that he was a great ruler, which of course he was, but that secondary, the primary, the primary thing is that. He was a perfect follower of religious principles. That is why he is known as Dharmaraj. Time and again he is referred in the Mahabharata as Dharmaraj Yudhishthira. And similarly, there are other great personalities also, like there are 12 Mahajan, Swambhu, Narada, Shambhu, Kumaro, Kapilo, Mano, Prahlad, Janaku, Bhishmo, Balir, Vayasa, Kivayam. That shloka is there. Yamaraj is saying that to his, uh, to the Yamadutas, to his friends. <laughs> Not friends exactly, but still, you know, they're like kind of. <laughs> so, when we uh, learn the lives, when we see the lives of these great personalities, then, and here it's mentioned about the great Yadu, and there's mention of Raghu also in many other places, because Lord Ram is Raghunandan. So when we study the lives of these people, then we will know how they behaved. And one of the perfect examples, which is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam of a leader, is the great Maharaj Prithu, about whom I'll discuss some other time. But he was an extraordinary personality in matters of setting a good example. Alright, so the next time when we 
have to choose some leader we need to make sure that we see what is the level of spirituality that this person is practicing because if we do not see that and then later on that leader gets elected so then as it's mentioned here but in the case of democracy the impious citizens themselves elect their representatives to rule over them and therefore they cannot blame anyone for their unhappiness so later on there's no use of criticizing leaders because it is we who elect them they do not come out of the air all right so that's the most important thing here that we should do spiritual practices ourselves and also select leaders who are also in that line all right otherwise people may not be very happy in this world as you see the situation of this world today it's so pathetic all right there you go if you are new to the channel then please subscribe down and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know how to choose a leader all right and if you want a consultation from me then you could go down to the website in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you find good leaders in this society all right until next time wish you good luck bye bye